to the workshop meeting for Verona Borough Council, Tuesday, April 30th, 2019. Please stand for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call, Mr. Kenna. President Drabicki Bell. Here. Mr. Conti. Here. Dr. Carpenter. Present. Ms. Lualbo. Here. Mr. McCarthy. Here. Ms. Provenza. Here. Mr. Suchovich. Sure. Mayor Cupro is out this evening. You got stuck at work and then got a flat tire. And I am also here. <coughs> Thank you. Okay, uh, council will now hear comments from uh, registered comments from the public. Hannah Hardy from Live Well Allegheny. Hello, thank you for uh, the opportunity to speak to you today. My name is Hannah Hardy. I work at the Allegheny County Health Department, um, and I got to meet your president at ALOM. We had a fun time at ALOM um, up at Seven Springs recently. Um, and as we were talking, I was sharing information about um, uh, Live Well Allegheny, which is our countywide health and wellness campaign. So this is something that County Executive Rich Fitzgerald kicked off about um, a couple years ago um, under the leadership of our new Direct, uh, health department director, Dr. Karen Hacker. And really the, the big picture here is we want to make Allegheny County the healthiest county for all of our residents in the country. And there's really a lot that you all as municipal leaders and that the municipality of uh, the borough of Verona can do to kind of help us along that path. Um, so really one of the reasons that, that we kind of started this program and this opportunity to work with our municipalities um, and uh, several other folks in Allegheny County is because we, we really struggle as it, as it relates to our health um, outcomes. Um, there are uh, uh, three main things that we can all do, how, we, how healthy we are, how, 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 uh, how well we eat, how nutritiously we eat, how physically active we are, and then our smoking rates. Those three behaviors um, can really prevent a lot of chronic disease that we see here with Allegheny County residents. So those are things like diabetes, stroke, heart disease. So then you think about what are those things that we can all do to kind of lead healthier lives. Um, so we, uh, Live Well Allegheny was started with the thought that we all need to make a commitment to um, leading healthier lives. And there's a lot we can do um, with that municipal leaders can do, a lot that schools can do. Our kids spend a lot of time in schools. Um, we also go, spend a lot of time at work um, and then our restaurants. So we're asking for commitment from those folks that I mentioned, from all of our municipalities, from our school districts, from workplaces as Live Well Allegheny um, employers, um, and then also restaurants that offer healthy options. And then we want to, um, uh, and then we want to recognize what Verona is doing as part of Live Well Allegheny. So um, there's an opportunity. Uh, I'm here tonight to ask your consideration to pass a resolution in support of and kind of in in commitment to Live Well Allegheny with some of the actions that Verona is probably already engaged in. And I know that you're already engaged in some because I can see the second item on the agenda is a trail feasibility study. So what are some of those things that we think about? That is like a, expressing a commitment to physical activity opportunities for folks in your community and things like parks and the trails that I know that you're working on just from what I know of Verona. Um, other things are related to healthy food access. I don't know, I can't remember from when we talked if there's a farmer's market, doing things like promoting your farmer's market, right? Um, uh, like we, we talked about physical activity, you know, there are different activities. I'm sure that you have a community day and other types of things like that that enable folks to get out and be physically active. Um, there also are opportunities just for uh, park improvements and then I don't know if, it, you know, if smoking is certainly an issue. There are opportunities to, for your parks where, where our kids are to, to, to make sure that they're smoke free. Um, so this is really an opportunity. Um, I, um, my guess is there are already several action steps that you're doing that could already be to, to encourage you to apply. So then we can then recognize Verona as our next Live Well Allegheny um, community. And then we would hope to have a celebration with you all, with the county executive and Dr. Hacker. Um, we're actually going to be at our newest municipality this Saturday um, at Bethel Park. We're going to be at kind of a park event they're having. Um, but this is really part of a countywide effort. You know, we're setting a vision that the health of our residents is very important and that there are things that we can all do. 
that I can do as a parent, that, that you all can do as municipal leaders, I can do with my job, our, our schools can do in terms of um, setting um, healthier options for our kids. So that was a brief overview. I'd be glad to answer any questions and talk about um, next steps. There is an opportunity for you all, and I've shared a um, standard um, resolution or like a model ordinance. Um, so there is an opportunity, and I would ask for your consideration to think about what are those things that are important here in Verona, and if you would consider passing a municipal um, ordinance in support of your commitment to live well Allegheny. Do you have a copy of that model ordinance? I email. I, you, go, you sent it to me. I did not bring hard. Co I could email I, it to all of you tomorrow. I don't have hard copies of that, but I I, okay. I can share that with well, you. I have. Yeah. Yeah. We'll get it yeah. Yeah. Well, one thing I don't know if I explained this very well, but there, you know, one thing that we're seeking are kind of clear commitments, and I don't think they're very. Uh, my guess is. For, cause I, because I know all of the things that you're doing, it'd be fairly easy to identify those things that you're doing. But I think it's very important for Verona to say, hey, we're doing these three things that are really gonna help our residents be healthier. For every for every municipality, it's different. Mm -hmm. You know, Bellevue was concerned about smoking rates in their business district. They wanted to do signage to raise awareness about that. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I know, I would certainly highlight the trail work because I know that you're engaged in that as well. Other folks are engaged more in um, healthy uh, food access. Clareton just opened up, they did not have a grocery store for many, many years. They just opened up a food market. Healthy ac access to fresh and healthy food is very important to them. Um, and then the other thing is if you have things that you want to do, perhaps we have over 160 community partners, so I don't know if there are other needs that you see here. Perhaps there's an opportunity for us to make a connection to um, uh, based on something that, that you all may have identified as a need that I don't know about. So do we need to make a motion to pass this resolution and then complete an application? There's not an application. The resolution, I would ask for the, 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 the ordinance is it. And in the ordinance, there's kind of some standard language. What I would ask, what we, would, what we do ask you to do is to identify three action steps. Um, some of those things are the, the trail work, you know, promoting healthy food in your um, community, sharing health and wellness information to your residents via, you know, having it out available or maybe via an event. So we would ask you to identify three action steps and that would be it. And then I would share that with the county executive's office. And it's getting towards nice weather. I know that there are community events, so we'd like to find an opportunity um, to really celebrate that. Um, okay. per perhaps at a future, yeah. uh, your community day. That <clears throat> sounds like a great idea. Question. Yes, ma'am. I, I actually run a nutritional health organization here in western Pennsylvania and I'm also on the board of our newsletter and every quarter I put a health column in there, a nutritional column. Oh my goodness, well I hope that gets highlighted in what you do and I'd welcome you uh, to become one of our community partners because there may be people out there looking to find out about your resources and other, I'm sure, I'm, I'm sure you have a lot of connections, but you know, I, I would certainly welcome yes, you as a community I, partner as well. Excuse me, I bring in doctors from many parts of the country oh my goodness. that are doctors but speak nutritionally. Oh, I'd love to hear more about that. Okay. Thank you. Do, yes, do you have access to funding for things like a community day? We, well, let me think about that for a second. We do, we have access, well, that is one thing that we do is to share funding res, uh, opportunities with our municipal partners. So one example of that, I'll get to more of a direct response to your question. We created a grant program with the Allegheny County Economic Development Department, Active Allegheny Grant Program, that is funding some of the physical activity, trail development, things like that. Um, for a community day, um, well, that grant program actually has funding for kind of like open street, if you've heard of like the open streets events that have happened, um, they've happened in Pittsburgh, but also several municipalities outside of Pittsburgh have had open streets events. I would argue it's kind of like a community day, except there's a real kind of physical activity component and there's a focus on health. Um, so there, there is an opportunity for that. Um, I would have to think about other types of um, funding for a community day. I mean, certainly we're hooked into some of the health care organizations that I see funding a lot of community days, so that might be an opportunity to connect you to some of those opportunities. Yeah. Well, as um, head of the ordinance committee, uh, I'll get a hold of a copy of this and 
just go over it with our solicitor and we could probably vote on it at the next meeting. Mm -hmm. That's, I don't see any problem with that. That'd be great. I do have um, paper information that I can leave for folks who want to see more of those materials. I'd like to leave just some general health department information out for your residents, if that's okay. That's uh, I saw you had a lot of brochures out there. Yeah, but I mean, if you can make room, you can share share a place. And I, and I will also leave for you, you may be interested on the, if you're going to be identifying the specific ordinance piece of it. We do have kind of a community impact report. So in here we have some different stories from what other municipalities, school districts, and things like that have done. I don't have, um, I could, um, um, I only brought three copies, but I can send additional copies of that. Okay, I appreciate it. If you could give me those copies and then, um, you know, if you could send to the borough here, to the borough building. Additional of these. Additional, I will, I will yeah, do that. I really mm -hmm. appreciate that. I will do that. I appreciate the time. Um, this is really, and then I would see this as just a beginning. I mean, if we would want, you know, if Verona does commit to Live Well Allegheny, we would certainly want to do a big celebration about that. Um, and then there may be opportunities, as you pointed out, to partner on future, you know, future um, um, I th things that you identify as priorities. I think it's important for us to get involved in this because the school district is involved in this. And since we're one school district, I think it, it would be important for both Verona and Oakmont. Yeah, your, to, yeah, your school district has done a, t a lot of stuff. Yes, we were out yes, there. They, they had a really interesting turkey trot, uh, right? Um, that we, I had some staff that were there kind of, you know, giving, helping with that and giving out Live Well information to all the kids in terms of like giveaways and things like that. Right. And I know they've done a lot with their... Um, they have like an interesting video program, like a t in TV program in the high school. They, they, and they do, were, yeah. They were having, um, you know, information about smoking and things like that. So it was, it's been a nice partnership with them. It, it very much so. So I'm looking forward to mm -hmm. to hooking up with you and getting this moving. Thanks for inviting us. Thank you very Thank much you. for coming. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'll put some other things there. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thanks, Hannah. Thank you, Hannah. <coughs> Okay, Mr. Forbeck. All righty. Hi, everybody. And what a great segue this is, isn't it? <laughs> because, uh, <laughs> yeah, it could be. Um, so as you know, I mean, we received a grant from um, the Active Allegheny Grant Program, $40,000 for Verona, Oakmont, Penn Hills, and Plum, that we were working collaboratively together to uh, work on a trail feasibility study to connect all the boroughs all the way up to, from the river all the way up to Boyce Park. Um, we received four um, RFPs, requests for proposals, or proposals from various folks, um, the members of the, we, we call VOP, Verona, Oakmont, Penn Hills, and Plum, two from Verona, two from Penn Hills, uh, one from Plum and one from Penn Hills. Or, yeah, we, we reviewed all these applications. Um, we spent over 20 work hours both together and um, individually to review these so we did a really thorough study of this and we have a recommendation for um, who we should award this RFP to um, and that would be um, the um, it's called environmental planning and design I sent both uh, to the council I believe the copy of the what we felt who should be awarded this um, this this bid um, we based it based on four criteria one was technical expertise and experience um, this firm showed that they they've not only worked in this field they worked locally they worked for in oakmont they worked in etna they worked in indiana county they also worked for the allegheny um, green web um, their methods and procedures was a little bit above others. They, they offered actually two public meetings where there was folks to have more public involvement with this, which we thought was a, a, a great point. Um, their specific qualifications, uh, they are partnering with HF Lens Company, engineering company. They're, they're an architect, a landscape architect plus the engineering firm. So they have both not only the design, they also look into engineering aspects and understand the permitting of it. And the cost was actually similar for all of them. It, the $40,000, it, it, it came really close between all of them, between $39,500 and um, $38,400. So it really wasn't that much of, a, much of a difference. That doesn't mean that's going to be your final cost. Uh, there were some emails I sent to, to Jerry and Craig to, to request that a letter of approval be made to uh, for this RFP. 
um, and we would like to have that done as possible this week. And so we would have to, we'd like to have action from the council to approve this. To understand that Verona is the one that's going to be holding, is the one that's going to be, um, we are the lead borough for this, this grant. All the, um, um, all the, the applications are in, on file. I have a copy here too. We can send it electronically. Uh, anybody can look at it publicly. Um, so we would like to be able to move forward on this. I know Dave is, Dave is here. I don't know if Dave, you want to add anything to that or? I mean, you summed it up pretty well. Yeah. I mean, um, yeah, we had a lot of good uh, bidders or proposers. So it was, I mean, I think we had a, a high quality turnout. Um, we were all unanimous in selecting uh, EPD, so. Yeah. And what does EPD stand for, environmental? Environmental planning and design. So I could send, you have a copy in, in there, but I definitely could send it electronically. That's okay. Yeah. okay. okay. Uh, and you said it's between 38.4 and 39? Well, this one, their, their bid was uh, was 39.498. That's what their proposal was, which is under the 40,000. And that's how much the grant was for? Yes. 40, okay. Yes. So you, need, you need a motion for accepting EPD or? To accept their recommendation and hire EPD to okay. do the, the feasibility study, correct. Okay, can I have a motion to accept uh, the, the um, recommendation. recommendation for EPD to do the, the study? At, at $39,498. I'll make that motion. Motion awesome. by Mr. Conti, second by Mrs. Provenza. Are there any questions? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passed. One question, so the letter will be coming out from Jerry. Right? Yeah, correct. As soon as Craig, I'll remind Craig, make sure that he, <laughs> and I'll email it to you. And then do we send it directly to them, or do you want to send yeah, it? Yeah, um, that's fine if it goes directly from you to them, but I want to make sure we tell the other folks that, that who did not get awarded. The uh, they, denial letter or whatever yeah. to them. Okay. I, I, I actually think you should keep a real copy on your record since you're the head guy of this. Yeah. So, if, you know, if the letter could go to them and Mike so yeah. that yeah, he can fine. keep. You'll get a copy for sure. Okay. okay. Mike, Great. did you say that you sent us some kind of email about this? Because I'm not finding it on my email. Um, I sent it to, uh, to Jerry and Craig, I think. Yeah, I think you Sandy. did. I think I was on there, yeah. too. Um, to be discussed here. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thanks, Mike. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks, Mike. Thanks, Mike. Thanks, Mike. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks for all that hard Thanks, work, because I know that was a lengthy, <laughs> lengthy process. All the communities <laughs> working together is a great, great accomplishment. I was only at one meeting, and that was... Yeah. Yeah. time consuming yes. so thank you very much Hannah if you have other commitments you do not have to stay for this oh, thank okay you. <laughs> thank you okay uh, council will now hear uh, from the public on agenda re related items please approach the podium Limit your comments to three minutes. State your name and address, please. Okay, Perry Kennegan Chan is in 525 East Rayro Avenue. Uh, probably you guys remember I, uh, last meeting I was here about my complaints about the property on 537 East Rayro Avenue. So your officer, Mark Stanton, after the meeting on April 25th, sent a letter about my property and, com and complains that the property, instead to check the property I was complaining about, he came a retired late for my property. Uh, I have the letter right here. And uh, basically he, he tells me that the house is in a bad shape. The siding is falling apart. There's a hose on the siding, and around the house, it's the, the grass is very high. Uh, and so he tells me that uh, the old lumber is uh, on a yard, on our yard. I took some pictures from the property, and I want to show you. He's been lying, and he does that to harass me 
and and take your reverse and and guess me and guess the owner anyhow also tells me that we don't have uh, we didn't pay the uh, occupation permit because we ran the property I have a copy of the check that we, we sent so before we get out of here the, the situation and get to the next level before I take him to the magistrate so I just thought I could stop right here and let you know what's going on with him and uh, and the other reason because I'm leaving next week overseas so when I come back and nothing happened with the guardian angel property I'm not I'm gonna hire an attorney and, and take you or him to the court because one thing is to try to solve the problem with the empty property and it's another thing to come after me for something the empty property creates a problem so uh, I hear the, the pictures of the of the property and this is the, uh, the property of the uh, guardian angel and this is the house I don't own any, not even an inch profit of this. And all these vines, they climb on my property and pull the, the siding off. And, and he complains that I have to take care of this property. That's the one. Is this, is this your house? Yeah, this is the house. Do you own this house? My, my wife have, owns half of it and my brother-in-law owns the other half. Okay, so who was the letter sent to? He sent it to uh, my nephew who sent the check and he took the address from his check. We paid the $35 at the beginning of the year and he didn't send me a letter or to my wife. He sent to my nephew because he got the address from his check. But your nephew, who, nephew owns the house. His father owns the house. Okay. Half of it. That's not an occupancy permit fee. That's a regulated rental license fee. That's the annual fee that you pay for a rental yeah. property. An occupancy permit is paid when you move in a tenant. If you don't have an that's, occupancy that's, permit for that tenant, then that tenant is in that house illegally. Okay. You have the $50 check that you spent whenever you had that house in, inspected that's, by code that's enforcement. That's a new one. Whenever, no, that's been there forever. You, every time you move a tenant in, you mm -hmm. pay $50 and you have the property That's inspected. the tenant is there for over a year. Maybe they pay, but that's, that's for the... The $35 is a completely different fee. That's an annual rental license. Okay. okay. The occupancy permit is what that letter is re regarding. Mm -hmm. If that tenant does not have an occupancy permit when they moved in, then that is why you Maybe got the Maybe they do have it because it's over a year, but I I'll check on that. But now back to the property, like I said, I don't own this land, all right? The second thing is that this teach complained about, I guess for this pallet, and this pallet, last year you hired a contract to cut the grass. This pallet was on, on this property, and in order to cut the grass, they pulled the pallet and left it on my property, and now he wanted to take care of that problem. So basically, he tried to, to tell me something. Yeah, but see, I'm, I'm confused because okay. if... If, confused with what? I'm confused on who owns the house. I mean, if it's if a, somebody else owns the house, why are you here? My wife is a half of it. But Mr. Stanton has looked on the county website. And it's, <coughs> it's not in your wife's name. But how come he send the owns the, the the letter and send it to, to my nephew? Because. Nicholas owns the house. No, that's my brother-in-law's son. Whose name is Nicholas as well? 
No, he's Nichols. My brother-in-law is a John, he's not a Nichols. When the regulated rental license application was filled out and paid by Nicholas, did Nicholas put his name on it? Because if Nicholas put no, his name he, on he it, just, then he's in our data. He's just closing the account and he has the checks and pay for All the taxes that come in to the really owners. Yeah, I'm not, so, I'm not sure. I can assure you one thing, Mark doesn't retaliate against anybody. Mark had no idea that you came to that meeting. He was here. No, he wasn't. No, he wasn't here that Mark night. Mark doesn't come to those he meetings. He doesn't come to the meetings. Not this one, the last one. He Mark? wasn't here. He wasn't here. He was not here. <laughs> Anyhow, the, the basic problem is the, the property of a guardian angel. That's all I can tell you. Okay. If, if, like I said, I'm coming back after the summer, and I, I need to solve the problem. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And I pay the fifty dollars worth if they don't, if they didn't pay. Thank you. Yeah. Zero. Zero. Mr. Kenna? I just have a handful of things. Uh, the mayor called me prior to the meeting and uh, couldn't make it. He got called into work and then he ended up with a flat tire. So he, he asked me to talk about the mural by the Doughboy by the Cannon on uh, um, High Street. High Street. High Street. Uh, he had somebody look at it that did the murals in the other parts of town, and that gentleman's highly recommended that we don't have anybody do that that is not, that's not what they do, that apparently it is in bad enough shape that unless it's basically scraped, re and then the concrete's repaired and then repainted that it's just going to be a waste of money and it's going to flake off um, i guess the concrete has deteriorated enough and the paint is peeling so much that just trying to patch it up and fix it is just going to be a waste and it's going to look bad and then end up needing redone so dave is going to contact um, a concrete uh, a concrete guy and look at the wall and find it get an idea of what it's going to cost to fix the face of the wall and then the gentleman he spoke to took a picture of the of the mural as it is now so that he can replicate it if we decide to do so. I see. Um, the next thing is, I want, in case nobody noticed, the poles are up at Wildwood. Uh, so that's underway. Uh, hopefully the lights will be there soon. And then the only other thing I have is that the garbage bids will be, the garbage contract was advertised and we have in the advertisement that we will be opening the bids on Friday at one o'clock here at the borough building. So they'll be sealed until then and we'll open them up and uh, present it to council for a vote at the next meeting. Okay. That's all I have. So um, can waste management empty those dumpsters on the site? No, They're I'm, a mess. Yeah. The recycling. Yeah, it's, um, I forget the name of the company. I always forget, but uh, that's fine. We'll call it. It's Waste Management, and then, what's the name of that company? Oak. Oak. Royal Oak. So bids yep. are going to be open on Friday the 3rd? Friday the, uh, no. Yes, Friday, Friday the 3rd at 1 o'clock. Okay. <laughs> we had four or five uh, companies reach out. Uh, to ask questions and inquire, so we're expect we're expecting a handful of bids. Um, so. Do you know off the top of your head regarding the specs? If it had to, do, uh, if you included this new thing about the plastics and the glass? Yeah, that was all that was all discussed, and and I don't know what the specs are off the top of my head. That was you know we dealt with that with Matt, but. Um, but what? Mm -hmm. uh, Matt talked to me. I mean, it's. It's one and two plastics, um, metal, and um, it's the other all the other plastics will be all the past. So three through seven plastics and no glass. Are the residents yeah. are the residents going to be 
notified about what can go and what can't be. They're going to have. Yeah, I mean, that should be all part of the contract. And that'll be on the yeah. on the yeah. garbage company. Yeah. But that, what I also said, I speak, I'm sorry. Yeah. yeah. I mean, there's not, there are also ample opportunities for residents to drop off that, that type of material, like papers and other material that they're, they're, that's possible, even glass. Um, there's a company called Michael Brothers who are doing uh, uh, glass only recycling. So I talked to Matt about that too, to, to make sure to maybe bring that all into the whole mix that even though it might not be curbside, you still have an opportunity for residents to drop that off. So. I want to make sure that some of the elderly people here in a time, they're not going to understand that. Yep. <clears throat> Nor are they going to be able to get it to Michael Brothers. As soon as the month comes, I'll be able to tell you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, you done? I'm finished. Okay, thank you. Um, I just want to, uh, are you going to bring up about Oakmont Barbecue? About we, the uh, that's just for us to be aware of, but we don't have to make any action for that yet. Oh, okay. They right. haven't gone through their process yet. But you don't need a motion? No. Okay. No. All right. Um, just some cog information here, Jerry. I don't know. Did you receive the uh, PDF about the, the joint training? paving training? Yes, right. I did. Okay, so um, the RSVP is ASAP. Yeah. And um, it's going to be on May 15th at 9 o'clock. Anybody on council is welcome to go to this training? I thought it was on the 13th. They uh, changed it. They changed it to Wednesday, May 15th okay. at 9 o'clock. I have to let the red guys know. I told them the 13th. Yeah, Wednesday the 15th. The 13th was tentative. I thought 13th was a date and 15th was a tentative rain date. I'll check. Yeah, but so. I'm pretty sure that it says 15th on that. This is for paving training? Yeah. The paving equipment that they have? The, co the, the cog bot. The cog bot. This has been a topic yeah, of yeah, discussion. Yeah, I understand, but I don't know what good it would be for me to go to paving training. Well, okay. <laughs> no. well it's mainly for the road guys, but right. if you're interested, if any, anybody's what's going interested, on. you okay. can go. I see. Okay, it's at right. East Deer Township, uh, the running track parking lot. <laughs> if you want to okay. run the miller, the milling machine. Well, I don't know. I'm going to need to learn. <laughs> <laughs> That's the back of my driveway. Okay, thanks. Um, <clears throat> the other thing I had was, um, I know we made a $500 dona dollar donation for the community day, but I was wondering if you and Jessica had any way of collaborating how this was going to go out since they're not a 501c3. Yeah, we have to figure that out and figure out how to disperse that. Yeah, um, anything that you purchase, you're going to pay sales tax on, we're not. So we have to figure out how to best handle that. Yeah, I sent you an email a while ago to you know start having that conversation. So let me know when you're ready to okay. figure that out. Uh, St. Joseph's uh, School is going to have a Community Appreciation Day. I have the information down there. It is on May 19th uh, from 9.30 to 1.30. They're having uh, first responder recognition. I dropped a flyer off to the fireman yesterday, sent it to the uh, e Lower Valley EMS, and I gave a copy to, uh, to Jerry. They're going to have uh, an inside yard sale, craft vendor show, tables are $10. I don't know if you want to get that information out on the community site. Okay, thank you. And I also want to know, can it go out on the te text alert, Jerry? Yes. Okay, thank you. So, um, also on May 9th, uh, Verner Elementary principal gave me a call. They're going to have a kindergarten registration at the Verner Library from 1 to 2.30. She would like council representation there from 1 to 1.30 uh, to let the incoming parents know what Verona has to offer. She's planning on having the Verner PTO there, the Mets Food Company, uh, Chamber was asked, we were asked. So if anybody is free on May the 9th, which I'm not sure what May the 9th is so here. Thursday. 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 What, what time? One uh, from <clears throat> 1 to one thirty. Let me know because I will let her know and give her name so that you're cleared to get into the building. So if you're interested, let me know this week, real soon. Um, 
Also, uh, the uh, Cannon Steps now is a problem because the high school is going to come down on Friday for Give Back Day and touch up the steps as well as take down the planner. So I'm going to have to give the principal a call and say, can that idea? Find something, find something else. Uh, it, are there any other ideas of what can be done? I mean, the planner, there, there, there's going to probably be about a dozen students. He was anticipating six for each project. Um, What's scan? I'm sorry, I misunderstood because they're coming to meet me. The, the mural on the steps. Yeah. We we were told that um, David had a guy, the guy who painted some other murals in the town. Yeah. Said that it's not in good enough condition to just go and touch it up. It's just going to come yeah, apart right away. Yeah, I understand that. The kids are coming to clear out the size of the steps, all the leads. That, the that's, that's fine. Yeah. That's okay. to do with it. Yeah, that's oh, okay. okay. We're that's just talking that's about that's the painting. We're oh, okay. Yeah. I <laughs> sorry. What about, didn't we have kids paint, like, go to the parks and paint benches? We got the building up there that can be painted. Do we have the paint and everything? Can we? We get would that? have to get the paint. We get the paint. Yeah. We, we, have, paint. we have paint left over from the benches at Riverbank. Is it here in the yeah, garage? I didn't know if there's any that need deep painting. I'm just trying to figure yeah. things for them. I mean, to the Riverbank are good. Yeah, they're 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 good. They're good. Yeah, 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 they're good first one to say it, it should be lightened up and if we, they want to put some kind of design on it or if anyone has any problem with that so we could actually take the painting from the mural and make paint the paint yes. the pavilion up the cribs yeah that but there's so, a group on may 18th the what a group on may 18th that asked what they could do at cribs serve the bird serve the bird oh, yeah so we thought maybe they would paint the pavilion okay so, so is that it for sure um, I'm not real sure on that. I don't know if that first was... First come, first serve? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know our AA had questioned that. Okay. And that was one of the suggestions. So I can look into it and get back to you right away. Yeah, like real soon because I need to text him tonight to confirm things. Okay. Okay. I have an idea. They need a little project. You know, High Street how it like curves onto I guess north. Um, right? Yeah. yeah. It's like full of debris and leaves and dead tree branches and like you can't even hardly see the sidewalk. And so um, I mean I, I don't think that would be too taxing for like students to just like you maybe need like a flat shovel to like get the debris off of the sidewalk and clear it out, but I think it would look a lot nicer. Is that like four hours worth of work? Mm. Well, for how many people? Six. Six. Oh. Well, that plus how slow they are. Well, they're already going to be down by High Street anyway, doing yeah, the hillside. Yeah, they're right there. I mean, I don't know. Between they're that right and the hillside. Her group, her group could, just, just could do that. I mean, these are these are older kids. If so we give them something, like I don't know who she has. I mean, serve she didn't serve the bird. Oh, yeah, thank you. You're welcome. Are they little kids? Are they, I don't know. Angela is a high school kid, and she talked to a guy named Mr. Hewitt. That's a Okay, that's who I talk with. Well, I'm confused. So am I. So um, let's let's go with the pavilion. Okay. Um, I can't think of anything else. We could get the paint for that, and because it was it was kids that had originally painted it because they had the murals on on there as well. Right. If they want to do a mural, that's fine. Yeah. yeah. So um, we'll go. We'll move from these steps to the Bridgefield paint. Okay. Um, now, where where do we get the paint? Where I mean, we, you have AJ uh, get the, the supplies. Look, where where did you get the paint? We got it at Home Depot and Wilkins, and we used Verona's tax code. So, although you know we we paid for it and got reimbursed, we did put it under Verona's. Okay. Tax ID for yeah. Okay. So I, AJ can do that. If we yeah, if we can figure out colors that we want or that they want, then I can have AJ do that again. Okay. So I'll text him tonight and yeah. say that. We need an idea on what colors and stuff, and we'll send them the street department to get this. Yes, so we'll that get they the have everything for eight thirty. Yeah, Friday. 
So will they come here and get the things at 8.30 in the morning that they need? Yeah. yeah. Okay. And will somebody be here to greet them? Mm -hmm. AJ, I guess? Yeah. If, okay. if nobody else can be here, AJ. I can't be here, but... Yeah. All right. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. Uh, the only other thing is the bike derby. Um, Sergeant Francos and I have been working pretty uh, diligently on this. Uh, Janet also made contact up at uh, Seven Springs at the Municipal Conference with a lady. She's going to be able to get some free bags of stuff, information and that to, to hand out to the uh, families. Um, Sylvia has information from Sergeant Franco's on the bikes that are needed in our tax exempt number. Um, I'm making a motion. Jerry, Jerry would like to purchase a grill. Uh, so instead of boiling the hot dogs, grilling the hot dogs instead because they were a lot tastier. So I'm making a motion that we uh, issue how much money do you think a grill costs? I don't know. Or Tom, do you want to what do you want to do with this? Do you want to I mean, <clears throat> try to get a one that's half decent or do you want to I, I mean, if we're going to buy one, I think we should buy a good one. I have an okay. event grill and I got that at um, Sam's and it cost me Two ninety nine or three ninety nine, yeah, something yeah. like that. And I've had it for six, seven years, and it's still working. It's an eight burner grill. It's big. It's bulky. It's not something you're gonna be able to carry around. But it, it's been very good. Can I, they wheel it from? Yes, it's on wheels. Okay. We got the same thing up the far away. Um. So. <clears throat> Four hundred bucks. Four hundred bucks. Four five hundred dollars. Okay. Maximum five hundred. Maximum five hundred. Sale right now too. Pardon? A lot of them are on sale right yeah. now. Yeah. That's right. Um, I and I, I agree with you. I think that's where I got mine. I think that's where we got ours up at Sam's. It's been a nice one. Yeah, that's and the idea. I, have it for other events. You know, I agree that it, it, because they do this every year, they need to have one that's going to last. Yeah. Yeah. They may give us a price too because it's for a borough. Motion on the floor to purchase a grill for the bike derby. No more than $500. I'll make Second. that motion. Second by Mr. McCarthy. Are there any questions? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passed. See, I had one more thing that I forgot to tell you. I, I talked with Jerry. I spoke with a gentleman the other day about bikes. I might be able to get some bikes donated for that bike derby. I have to. I still have to talk to him. I wanted to talk to Jerry first to see what was going on, but Okay. I might be able to get some bikes down there. Oh, wonderful. Okay, thank you. I'll let you know as soon as I know. Very good. Okay, so, so then we'll I have to talk, talk with have to Dom. Give me a day or two. And, uh, Do you want the so, sizes? What size do you yeah, want? Uh, yeah. Okay. yeah. Well, I, Sylvia, keep the sizes. I think whatever you get, take. Okay. And um, then that way we can supplement mm -hmm. if we need something else. Okay. So do you keep hold on to the sizes. No, I meant in case he asked, what size do you want? Yeah, when we're done, when the meeting's over, I'll get sizes from you. I'll write them down. Okay. And um, I think that's everything. Okay, Mr. Clinty. Okay, in, in regards to the bike derby, I talked to Jerry. I talked to... Uh, uh, Jesus, <laughs> I haven't seen you for so long. Mr. Ashbaugh. Yeah, yes. yeah. Mr. Ashbaugh. Ash well, that's what I know you by, Mr. Ashbaugh. I'm trying to think of your first Stretch. name. Sorry. He's going to get a hold of. He's going to get a hold of uh, RAA. I haven't had been able to make contact for the helmets, but mm -hmm. we will get in contact about that. And uh, I talked with Nancy today about a couple of things going on the uh, Cribs Field. The the, the building itself, the water authority was called and they're making arrangements to get the meter put in so those guys can get the water lines fixed in there. That, that should be all completed by the end of this week. Um, I'm hoping they put the meter in tomorrow so they can get up there and get the water lines fixed. I think the water fountain itself is broke beyond repair. So I told AJ if it's broken, we have to get a new, he has to get a new one. And I talked to Jerry about it and he's okay, he, he was okay with it. And as soon as that project's done, <clears throat> they're gonna come down and start putting the water line in around a, the new pavilion and uh, get that finished. That'll be the following week. And they've been out, there's, there's been catch basins that they've been repairing that 
weren't weren't so easy to repair. That that's why they're a little bit behind on some other things, but they had to be repaired, and they're cold patching holes. So they're they're doing what they can, <clears throat> and that's pretty much all I have. Okay, thank you, Mr. McCarthy. We're still working with Jerry on the uh, part timers for their salaries to be brought up. Thank you. Mr. Suchovich. We got the AG 385 report filed with the Auditor General's office. Um, what is that, Brett? That's the annual pension report that makes us eligible for fire relief money and, and pension aid. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Dr. Carpenter. Okay, a um, couple of things. We had our uh, ordinance meeting on um, April 22nd. Several things came up. I uh, need to make a couple of motions. Um, I'm not going to go necessarily in order of this here, but uh, ECODE 360. Uh, I handed out to all of you guys a paper that looks like this. Um, this is an email that I got from the ECODE 360 people. Marshall was able to get all of the um, ordinances that have not been sent in to them, which has been since September 8th of 2015. So they're sent in um, during our month of April. Uh, you can read this. Some of them don't need to be codified, which is a good thing because it's expensive. So there's one ordinance from 2015, several from 2016, and several from 2018, and then we've had three so far this year. Um, there are some things that have to be done, like I have to figure out dates for some of these, and hopefully Craig has that information. So um, basically what I need to do tonight is um, make a motion to uh, approve, let's, it's 59.95 is the most, on the second page there that it would cost. Keeping in mind that it's for like three and a half years to codify what needs to be codified. Um, and uh, so I'm gonna make a motion for that and then we can talk about what happens next. So I'm gonna make a motion for uh, no more than $6,000 for the codification of the ordinances from 2015 to current. And that would take care of how many? Uh, well, uh, I'm not sure, 25 or something. I didn't count them all. And it, and they're not all being caught. <coughs> like, every year we have to pass an ordinance about the tax millage. I don't believe they codify things like that. Um, and I thought I'd send this out in email to everybody previously so you could have time to look at it as well this attachment from this lady but if I forgot my apologies um, so it's 16 17 18 part of 19 part of 15 so three and a half years did you make a motion I did Okay, motion on the floor made by Dr. Carpenter to uh, submit these ordinances to uh, code, E-code. Yeah, E-code 360. E-code 360, uh, tune at no more than $5,995. Is there a second? I'll second. Second by Mr. Conti. Are there any questions? Nancy, what are all these blank lines here? She has to get the base for the okay. results there. Yeah, yeah. I, just, I just printed out, uh, the attachment off the email. Okay. These are, these are things that they are willing to work with us on. We just had to get them all into them mm -hmm. in the month of April, which we did. And then um, 
we'll work on these specifics and get them actually into the into the code 360 that you uh, access online. Okay. Okay, are there any other questions? All of those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passed. Okay. Um, when we had our ordinance meeting last week, we talked about a property on West Railroad where there are people staying there that we think don't own it and aren't renting it. Um, it was suggested uh, and recommended by the committee that we make a motion tonight to share of sale that property. Uh, that appears to be a better option because putting in a, or filing an injunction to have the people leave leaves that property our responsibility. And we would prefer to sell it to someone. It's a pretty cute house actually. Uh, right down there on uh, West Railroad. And so it, it would kill two birds with one stone, we'd be able to sell it, and it, by definition, the people who were squatting there would have to leave. Share of sale is not a cheap thing to do. Um, I think it's between five and $7,000, but uh, it was recommended particularly by our esteemed code enforcement officer that we wanna try and sell this before the winter so we don't have to worry about the water pipes. <laughs> And, and everything like that. So I was asked to make a motion tonight to approve a share of sale, and Craig would be taking care of that downtown. What's the address? 204, 204. Uh, West Railroad. Okay, mm -hmm. motion on the floor to share sale 204 West Railroad Avenue. Is there a second? Second. Okay, motion by Dr. Carpenter, second by Mr. Conti. Are there any questions? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passed. Another thing that we discussed at the meeting uh, was just to have um, <coughs> letters uh, drawn up for the water and gas companies to make sure that they repair the roads when they open them in a timely fashion. And uh, they're doing a really good job of that today. The water company was anyway. So I appreciate that. Um, and the other thing that I wanted to um, bring your attention to is the preliminary ordinance regarding alcohol, uh, both at outside dining areas and in the parks. Um, so all I wanted to do tonight is bring that to you guys' attention to uh, discuss, give your comments, and allow later on if the public has any opinions, comments about it. Section one is basically saying it's okay to sit outside of a restaurant or an establishment and have a, a drink at the table by the restaurant or like the Thai place or whenever in a group gets started, I suppose it would include um, the cider place, I don't know where they put a table though because they have that window. But anyway, um, so that's what section one is saying. What section two is saying, uh, and I'm basically gonna read this because it's only two sentences long so that everybody can clearly understand what, what this is saying. Uh, it says, uh, the borough of Verona would eliminate the <coughs> prohibition the carrying, transporting, or consuming of any malt, spiritus, or venous uh, beverages whatsoever within the limits of borough parks or to remain while under the influence of same. That's basically what it says now. What we're changing is that the consumption of alcohol in borough parks may be permitted at the discretion of borough council via permit the process for which council may from time to time establish or amend by resolution. So this uh, section two is basically saying if someone, if we would make up a permitting process and if an organization in the borough wanted to go through the process of getting uh, the permission from the LCB that you need to get, uh, then 
filled out the permit for the borough and the council would then approve that permit, then that group would be able to have their special event with alcohol, most likely beer, because that's what people have in parks, in my experience. But um, this is not saying that anybody who wants to have a birthday party or a Steelers pep rally is just going to waltz in and fill out a permit and pay a permit fee and then go and drink a bunch of beer in the park. That's not what this is about. This is for special occasions only, and every single one would have to be um, approved by council. So I'm, I'm just bringing this up so people can ask questions, uh, discuss, and anything that we would want to add or change can be done uh, over the course of the next few weeks. And at some point, make a motion for advertisement. That's only where we are in the process. Nancy, one thing I see that you might want to look into, it says outside of dining areas. And from what I, what I understood, the, uh, the brew pubs in the cider house don't have food, as far as I know. I don't know if anything's changed, but you might want to change that as far as dining area. Oh, I see what you're change, saying. Just change that's the wording. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. Pardon me? They have food at the cider house. Do they? Okay. Yeah. That's what you're saying. How about the yeah. microbrews? Do they have food there? Uh, they're they're okay. going to have some snacks, um, and they're going to have food trucks. But I'll, I'll, yes, that's a good idea. Thank you. Okay. Guess at our meeting we had a discussion and um, about this and our code enforcer and our borough manager cautioned us about this this having alcohol in the parks and I would like the, all of council to hear the reasoning be, behind the code enforcement and the borough manager with with this if you if you don't mind. Mark, Jerry? Um, I just, uh, however you write this, whether you decide to have it for special events or have it for permits, in my experience, you need to have insurance policies in place if it's an event or if it's things like that. And it's just something that needs to be considered on all the different angles before you allow it. The other thing that was brought up was with Cribs Field, with the original donation of the property, if that is something that is allowed with that agreement. Do we know that? We don't. Okay. Now, my understanding about insurance, although I'm not an insurance expert, is that whoever would be sponsoring the event would have the appropriate insurance and would put the borough on their insurance as a rider. Um, but there's other people who are um, better um, experienced in that kind of thing, but that's my understanding of that. I remember when they had the concerts in the park and we sold the beer out here. We had to get a special insurance and special letters to the borough and there was there was a hoopla behind it. Just yeah. you get a special L C B license. Yeah, yeah we had to and get that's it. what you should put in here even though uh, it says, you know, that the borough is permitting it. It should be that the L that they have the proper LCB permits. Other thing I would consider. Yeah, I don't know if they would need that though, because if they're only just having, like, say, if they're if they're selling it, that's different. But if they're just having a party for something for themselves, would they need that for that? I don't know. Yeah. I don't know, and that's why I'm saying. Right. The other thing oh, I, I ask because it, right? the insurance may require. It. Right. Yeah. Mark, do you, Mark, do you know that? Uh, no, my my just opinion <coughs> from having been on a borough council, you know, your parks are small. It's not like Penn Hills or Monroeville where they have a big area and a grove. So to me, I think like up at Cribs, you know, you got kids around there. It's a congested area. I, I, I just, you know, I just wonder if you're going to be opening up a problem you don't have now. Well, again, I just want to say, this is not for every Tom, Dick, and Harry to come up there. It's not going to be a weekly or even a monthly thing. This is going to happen maybe twice a year. Like I said, I just yeah. offered that opinion yeah. uh, because, uh, 
you know, unforeseen things can happen, and uh, you don't know that the groups are going to have a properly trained bartender. I think so, that would be, yeah. would be one of the requirements. Right. Especially if it's a mixed group of adults and kids there. It's a little different, a car cruise, you know, where there's more adults there, because it's not really a youth aren't into car cruises too much, you know, that type of thing. So just the kind of thing to watch out for. The other thing I would have Craig review is what liability the borough has. If somebody's overserved or if somebody under 21 gets a hold of alcohol, what liability the borough has in that case. I'm curious if anyone knows what liability does the borough have now if someone goes to the hula bar and gets drunk and something happens. No, but the borough doesn't have any. It's not borough property. No. But Sherry Kai surely does. Okay. The owner of the bar. If my, somebody gets drunk at my house, mm -hmm and then hurt somebody on the way home, I'm responsible. Mm -hmm. So there's a definite possibility that the borough would have liability if somebody's overserved and hurt somebody. So we'll check into that. I, um, absolutely. Um, and I think the, the, the donation of Cripps Field needs to be looked into and find, find out what or how was it originally determined. That I wouldn't have one clue how to find that out. I that, to, that document is here. I've seen it, and I'm not sure where it's filed, but, <laughs> but there is a whole thing there because you can't sell that property. Right. That's the way it was written. Oh, up. Well, I have a sense. copy of it at home. I'll look through it. And I'll okay. For it. Gina, could you give me a copy of that, please? Yeah. I'll have to dig. Okay. I'll have to dig in here. <laughs> okay. I, I guess, you know, when you're talking about special events, okay, and David has conducted weddings down here at this pavilion and that. Mm -hmm. I mean, how do you determine I think it'd be what the borough sponsored events. Okay. Like, like, well, that's the rest what we're of so would, right now. Yeah. Would we deny private? Yeah, well, that, that's what we're, that's what we're, that's why we're discussing Okay. It. Yeah, that's why we're discussing it. All right. Um, but uh, it sounds like um, I wasn't at the events when the fire department had beer. What were those? Were they in the parks? It was a concert street? in the park, Kennedy. We talked about that. Was Beetle, that? When, when, when we had Beatlemania here and the different... I think that was the one. It was the yeah. biggie. It was the Beatlemania yeah. one where... But was there it was in a, the park or on the street? It was, it was they had a stage set up in the parking lot. And people filled in here and then we sold... We had a beer trailer and we sold beer. On the street? Mm hmm Okay. So it wasn't in the park? Cause well, they were drinking in the park. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so technically... It was in no, the park. it's still part of the park because right. of the simple fact right. that but they're I'm consuming saying, alcohol in right. the park, so it has Without to come Without changing the ordinance, there yeah, was that drinking was of alcohol in the park, even though we weren't supposed technically to. Technically, that was illegal. Is what happened. <clears throat> now we're trying to make it so that people can do it more legally, that's all. Okay. Well, maybe during the. Well, it was all well, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I just want I just I want to bring it up so that we can look into these things and any other comments that may come later, I'll take note of, and we'll go from there. Um, let's see. Do I have anything else? Um, Jerry, I just wanted to ask you if um, I saw that uh, Resnick did some really nice work around that one pylon, and they they've done some mulching and stuff. Are they planning to keep up with that during the course of the summer? They are. Okay. Um, and uh, I just wanted to just have it on record. I looked at the minutes from the last meeting, mm -hmm. and they look really good, except for one thing. It says that that um, zoning thing is on May 4th, but it's on June 4th. Wait, what? The, the, the class? The, the seminar thing? Yeah, zoning. Uh, I have to look the zoning thing up. I can look at it. Book, but it's, it's on June 4th. It's on June 4th, and it says in the minutes that it's on um, May. May 4th, which okay. zoning beyond the basics. Okay. Well, there's three of them actually: Tuesday, June 4th, Thursday, June 6th, and Thursday, June 13th. Okay, I'll um, check it out. But it's not on May 4th, which is what the minutes say. Um, and I'm going to leave anything having to do with uh, flowers. Angela, will you take care of that? Or do you want me to take care of that? Oh, yeah. Well, um, 
Uh, I'll just say that as far as I know from Angela, the baskets are being delivered on the 21st of May. Yep. So I don't know about the times maybe Angela can get up and clarify some things, but they need to be hung yep. either that day or early the next day, which means Tommy will be starting on the 22nd of May. And he, he did such a great job. He knows when to water them twice and when to water them once. And if we uh, uh, plant flowers like for the veteran wall, which it, you know, it looks like we're paying more attention, we're taking the weeds down on either side of the steps, we're gonna look into someone fixing the wall, that maybe we could uh, ask him to also water the flowers at the wall uh, instead of us dragging water over there every day. Uh, and he, and the flowers at the wall are not as critical as the baskets because they're in the ground and the baskets are hanging there in the bright sun. They need to be done, but if it rains, sometimes you still need to water the baskets, but you don't necessarily have to water the flowers. And he, he seems to be very good at deciding how much it needs to be watered and getting them done. Um, so that's all I can think of for right now. Thank you. Has the zoning board signed up? I have to check and see. Okay. They were contacting more, should we? Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Mrs. Alaba. I just want to mention that this past Saturday was the Great American Cleanup. Um, it was a real successful day, thanks to Luke and Kathy Maddock for getting it together. Um, There's about 30 people that showed up for it and split into groups and got it done. It was a nice morning for it. Um, Luke and Kathy also had like a little continental breakfast set up for everybody. They had coffee and some cookies and bagels and things like that, which I understand they paid for on their own. But I think I would like to ask the borough if they could reimburse Luke and Kathy for what they spent um, that day because, I mean, it was a really it was the best turnout that they ever had a lot of young families a lot of kids um we even had some oakmont residents that came people from rosedale that helped verona dental. dental they had what six uh employees that came and helped right. so yeah it was a great representation and uh, it was a good day for that so i'd like to make a motion i'll second for reimbursement to uh, luke and kathy maddox for the continental, continental, continental breakfast that they provided. Are there any questions? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passed. And that's really all I have. I really okay. don't have much on. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Mrs. Provenza. Thank you. Today I uh, paid my taxes, the borough tax, and the lady that was there from Keystone Collections was very happy. She said, we actually had 19 people today. Last year, I think we had like one or two. So she was very encouraged with that. And I did call David Recupero and I asked if he would call Curtis. He did and had it put on so that people would know that today was the last day. So I didn't get it. Yeah. I didn't get it. I know he, he said he took care of it. So. Well, I didn't get it. Yeah, you know. I didn't get it. Okay. Have you done it? I don't know, but, but we did have 19 people. Uh, also, yesterday, I attended and represented our borough at uh, the Allegheny County Boroughs Association. That was their annual meeting of uh, District 2 member boroughs. And it was held at um, Monroeville Municipal Building. Uh, it was uh, fire, police chiefs, police, and... Uh, county or excuse me council people very very well attended the two speakers there were uh, county executive rich fitzgerald and also district attorney stephen zapala and the subject was uh, on public safety regionalization and they did an excellent job um, their focus was cameras and safety of our residents and our businesses and it was very well presented. And I'll just give a couple facts real quick of some of the things that they told and said, take these back to your council, let people know what the value of the cameras is. Um, Stephen Zapala said the cameras to this point have brought in 1.5 million in seized money. 
That was the first thing that he started with and expounded a little on that. Also, now the schools have a database that's recognized by license plate. And to date, um, Gateway High School plus 120 other schools are now um, equipped with cameras. And they're having very, very good success with it. Because a lot of times you'll have maybe um, a divorce or a separation and maybe a parent wants to come in, say a father wants to come in, take the child and they're not allowed. It's only maybe the mother that's allowed to take the child, but they have cameras that can instantly pick up anything that's going on that isn't right. Oakmont actually had a robbery, a bank robbery at their, one of their banks in Oakmont. And within minutes, that person was picked up in Penn Hills that quick and taken in. So the um, business of having cameras, from what I heard yesterday and learned, um, it was just phenomenal, the information they gave. And I did ask some questions, and one of them was, well, we're very close to Pittsburgh Mills. How safe is Pittsburgh Mills? Because we all know Monroeville has had problems. And um, they said there were problems up there, and the problems there were store theft and uh, car theft, where people were stealing cars. They are now fully equipped with cameras up there, and he said it's a very, very safe place to shop because they're very well covered with cameras. And um, these cameras can also be seen on a smart, for instance, if we had one here, it could be picked up on a smartphone that a police officer or chief would have, on tablets, on computers, or there can even be an app in the police car where they would instantly know what's going on. And a lot of communities have actually gone together and maybe a, an area, for instance, like Oakmont, Verona, uh, Penn Hills, part of Plum maybe, they could all come into this. And uh, they said that whenever the U.S. Open was in Oakmont, they put cameras everywhere. And they said that there were people that were trying to cause problems. And those cameras picked them up, those problems were nipped in the bud immediately. So um, just seemed like a very, very impressive thing to do. One of the questions I did ask that I thought was quite important was, do we need a feasibility study? Should we decide to have cameras here in our town? And the remark for that was, the state will take care of the feasibility pricing. You don't have to pay for it at all, which I thought was great news because feasibility plans are not cheap. Not at all. But the state is willing to take care of that. And um, another thing, Sharpsburg, and this is just one of the examples of a community they picked. Sharpsburg has 16 cameras and they just received a $40,000 rebate on their insurance because of having cameras. So it sounds to me like a win-win situation. We're not only protecting our residents and our businesses, but it's gonna lower our insurance because we're covered. So I said to Steven Zappello, would there be money available for us here in Verona to get cameras? And he stopped and he looked at me and he said, Sylvia, and these are his quotes, I will be more than glad to work with you and help in every way possible. Yes, the money is available. So I put this on the table here. See what you people think. Sounds like a win-win situation to me. As a council, it's our duty and our job to protect our people and our businesses. And um, I guess it's something we would open to discussion. They, that was a topic of discussion at, at Seven Springs, Mr. McCarthy, I think you, you attended. And we, we've touched base with Mr. Zappel for a meeting with him. Okay, well this was about just cameras. This yeah, was just cameras. yesterday I went there and I was just reporting back. I didn't know yeah. anything about yesterday. So Mark wants to I I got a letter, okay. an invitation to go and I went. Zapella already provided the money for cameras up at center and down at McDonald's, so Correct. those have been working for a couple of years. 
Well, I think this is for oh, yeah, maybe more. newer, more advanced, and these would be with license plate recognition, right. and he said that's wonderful. That in itself is wonderful. Well, uh, you would have bought the license plate cameras here, but Oakmont fault in doing it, and that was the problem, because they wanted <coughs> both sides of the bridge covered, like down right. here and then over there, and uh, Oakmont Bolton. They wanted them at the Hal at Halton right. on tw Old 28, and on the boulevard and Oakmont didn't want to do it so we couldn't get the recognition because it, the three had to be coordinated so that you could see the cars coming right. i understand what you're saying what about the opportunity to to see the the what the cameras look like on the screens in here the chief showed me one day it they're they're that well, close to being able to read them without any any problems they're pretty good cameras Oh, what they showed, they actually had a screen that was on a stand, and it showed an accident in Southside. And they picked that license plate up in an instant, and the police were right there on it. The guy fell off a motorcycle, and he wasn't even off the ground. The police were already there. It was that quick. You're right, Dom. It's, it's an amazing thing. These are, I guess, new, really updated cameras. And we can definitely use more. Yeah, absolutely. Well, he said, just call me. I'll work with you. We brought, he said the money's available. And we don't even have to pay for the, uh, the uh, feasibility study at all. They'll, the state will take care of it. So I think it's something for us to certainly think about, talk about. Thank you. Thank you. I have one more thing You're before you go to the audience. Yes. I need, I need to have an exec session. Pending okay. litigation? Yes. Okay. And we don't have to come back. And we don't have to come back. Thank you. <clears throat> okay. Uh, council will now hear from the public on public related items. Please approach the podium. Clearly state your name and address and limit your comments to three minutes. Good evening, it's Dave Matlin, 722 Bruno. Um, regarding the alcohol ordinance, specifically with regard to the parks, um, I just had a few comments because I think this was discussed at a rec board meeting a couple months ago, right? And I believe that we had some similar discussions and I thought that we had recommended to, if we were in agreement to recommend to Nancy to look into a possible ordinance, was that? Yes. Am I remembering it correctly? Okay. So, um, I guess, you know, there's some good points brought up. Um, the one thing that, that I didn't hear that I thought council may want to consider is um, if there is an, an ordinance allowing alcohol by premises to say no glass containers whatsoever, um, I've seen that. I did a bunch of research on other municipalities in the area and what they have as far as allowing alcohol in the parks, and that was a common theme I saw was that <laughs> not allowing glass containers, I think that's will be a good idea. Um, as far as um, insurance, um, I mean, Jerry raised a good point. Um, I, I'm not sure what other municipalities do. I, I'd be curious to find out what what they do because I, I looked and there was uh, Penn Hills, Sharpsburg, Aspenwall, Shaler, Monroeville, Ross Township, Millville. Um, City of Pittsburgh and the Allegheny County Parks all have some kind of provision to allow, <clears throat> excuse me, with a, with a permit, permit process similar to what Nancy described, um, allowing, allowing it for special events or groups, that sort of thing. So I, I would think that the, if there's some insurance issue, um, I mean, I didn't see any mention of insurance being required in any of the forms and, and things that I saw. I did see Shaler has a form for allowing a permit in their one pavilion, and it, you signed you signed a permit form that said that you, you won't hold the borough or the, the township liable for anything, you know, that happens. So I, I don't know if that's something that could be discussed with Craig and look at, you know, some kind of liability waiver. Um, I mean, my personal feeling is that you know, it should be, you know, we should tread carefully and we should do this with a lot of consideration and a lot of thought, you know, in the, in going into it and not just do it on a whim. But I think for things like Community Day or um, the Farmer's Market or the food truck roundups, you know, especially here in Railroad Park, it seems like a great opportunity to involve, you know, the Cider House or the new breweries. And, and do some sort of beer tasting or cider tasting. Um, I mean, obviously everyone still has to obey any other laws, any other PLCB requirements for alcohol. 
Um, I, I mean, I I don't see it really becoming a huge issue if it's if the you know the permit process is done thoughtfully. Um, the thing with railroad is that you're right next to the police station, so it's it's not like the police are going to have no idea what's going on. Um, and then, as I understand it, uh, to Pat's comment about the PLCB, um, and, and maybe Craig could weigh in on this, but um, as I understand, it, if you're not selling it, um, you don't need any kind of license. Um, That's correct from PLCB. But um, I think what we talked about at the rec board meeting was was basically just allowing people to to have it or to you know if if, if there's like a, a community day and there's a beer tasting, you, you wouldn't be selling it; you'd be you know giving it away. Um, so I think that's a little bit different in the eyes of, of PLCB. Um, the other thing, I, I didn't know about anything with, regarding the cribs. Um, if that's the case, I mean, maybe it sounds like you're going to investigate that more, but maybe it could be location-based and say only Railroad Park or only Railroad and River Bank or, or whatever. Um, you know, that, that's another possibility to consider this. Um, so I, I would just hope, I would just ask the council, you know, look into those things, the, the other things that were discussed, and maybe check with other municipalities and see what kinds of issues they have, if any. I, I mean, I think from just talking to a few people, I haven't heard of any issues at those other municipalities in regards to their alcohol permits. I think, you know, if we could do something similar that's, um, you know, reasonable, it, it, might, it might help boost the turnout for some of these events and give an additional draw for some of the adults um, that might not otherwise come to the food truck roundup or you know maybe you want to just have something like that along with it because it's a nice compliment so um, thanks for the consideration thank you thank you hello Tim Long uh, 323 Penn Street um, my first thing is that the lights out summer kickoff draft tournaments our third annual one is coming up you guys pretty much covered all the points that I want to talk to, except for the rolling of the field. The field was supposed to be rolled last year after Battle in the Borough when the fire truck put the big ruts in the field, and it has been rolled by me um, at least twice, but it needs to be rolled. It's very lumpy. Um, in the trench still from the scoreboard to the thing is not filled in it's a big rut there's grass growing in it but there's not enough dirt in it so it's settled huh so it's settled. yeah it's settled down okay. um that's why we were trying to get on the roll because you fill it with dirt you roll it you fill it with dirt you roll it again then it's level um that's that was my only thing i'm trying to get you know get that done so that when we have people up the park for battle on the borough and other events that we're not walking on uneven ground and people are twisting their ankles and hurting themselves. The other thing is um, I'm filling out the application for the LCB just in case you guys do pass the permit. Um, for them, you have to have a ramp certified person if you're selling alcohol. You can't not have a ramp cer certified bartender. Um, you also have to clearly write out how you're gonna sell alcohol what the time periods are, how much you're gonna sell it for, all, you, you have to cover everything. Um, so it's a very long, tedious process and they are very meticulous about giving out special event liquor license to people. Um, I did go over it with Craig. Craig actually looked at my uh, whole application so he knows everything that goes into it. So whenever you guys do have a chance to talk to him, he will be able to tell you what's going on. Um, that's pretty much it. Thank Tim, you. Tim, when you're filling out that application, does that take, only take into consideration the battle in the borough? I mean, um, well, I, for my foundation, when you fill out a special event liquor license, you can have it up to ten days in a row, or you can have six separate um, applications. Okay. Um, I'm only filling it out right now for battle in the borough because that's the only thing that the Parks and Rec was actually talking about selling alcohol at. Um, in the same aspect, if we do sell alcohol, it will only be sold from the time that the wrestling starts, which would be five, till intermission. And then, and it would be a lot more expensive than going to the bar and buying a beer, so that we don't have people 
buying a six pack of beer and getting drunk at the park. Mm -hmm. Plus, like I said, we would stop at intermission. That way it would give people two, two and a half hours to get the alcohol out of their system before they left the park. Um, just taking that into consideration, I just want to let you guys know what's going on. I appreciate it. Thank you. Yep. And I just want to add that the reason that you guys want to do that is because it's a fundraiser. Yes. Right? Um, so it was more fun. It's it not, it not us. Yeah. It's, this was brought up by Parks and Rec. I do not drink, uh, yeah. nor do many of the people on my board. Uh, for our foundation, but it is, uh, alcohol is a big draw for people. Uh, we would get more people, we would sell more tickets, more people would come. Mm -hmm. um, and you raise more money. Yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. And that's the whole point, is to try to get as much money as we can for the parks. So. I'm not opposed to it, I'm just concerned about the no. the bottom line with Cribs, you know, <clears throat> being that it was donated land and yes. such, and uh, it's a family friendly like said, and, environment. And any time you go into that, you need to tread lightly and, uh, and that's what I'm make that's sure the we're only thing I, I care about. So yeah, any more information you need from me, just feel free to email me and I will give you anything that I can. Thanks, Tim. Okay. Hi, Luke Maddox, 234 Penn Street. Uh, thank you, Janet, for your report on the cleanup. I just wanted to clarify a couple things. Uh, Giant Eagle did donate the donuts and the cookies. Okay. So we bought the water and, and the coffee uh, and, and the bags and stuff like that, and, and we are going to get reimbursed, so I appreciate that. That's great. Uh, I just wanted to, to mention, again, it was great that Verona Dental Care came. You know, we've really never had something like that happen before. We had a great turnout. I think a lot of that was uh, thanks to the community group. Uh, uh, social media people getting the word out. I think that uh, there were flyers put up and the text alert did work for us, so that was great. That let people know. Uh, we do also have an adopt a street sign up sheet, and you don't have to do a whole street, you can do a block or part of a street. And the last thing is, I know there's now a new group called Verona Litter Getters, so you can look around and find that. So, so, yeah. but it was a great suc <laughs> success, a good turnout. So, thank you. Thank you. Look, that adopt a street, you you have yes. forms? If I just do this on my own time when I feel like doing it, I'm, do, do we still have to sign up? I mean, I do it all the time. Yeah, you don't have to give us an idea where things are covered. So, like, if you're doing your section regularly and somebody else is doing another block, it just lets us sort it out. I guess more the blind spots is what we're looking for. Okay. Mike Forbeck, 6243. Um, interest of time, I, I mirror what Dave said, very articulated way about the ordinance. Um, and just, there's been very successful um, communities that have done this. And I hope we do reach out to them on insurance or whatever that they do to make, make it successful. Um, the other thing I want to let you know, I was notified by uh, Patty Thomas that she will not be doing the um, farmer's market. Uh, That's news. Nice. Yes, it was very news. It was a text message to me suddenly. So, um, I, you? What? I, I guess I'm special. Um, it was more like you're going to do it, aren't you? No. So I, I want to reach out to council. We're going to. That's going to be a topic of our rec board meeting next week. I think. Um, I don't think it should be one individual person should be taken. I think it should be a combination of rec council chamber to to make sure this i think we're all want this to continue and make it successful carrie called me tonight too about that so i think we're going to be speaking on that on that aren't we lucky so um just want to let you inform you that we Thank do want to continue I appreciate okay. That. okay angela penny 521 center avenue I just want to touch base for Friday to make sure that we're on the same page, that we are going to be cleaning out on either side of those steps, those yeah. bedrooms as well. And then um, will Resnick be the one putting the fabric and the mulch done? I, I, I'm road, talking about the street. I talked with AJ, the road department will do that. They'll soon. do that? Yeah, as soon as okay. it's done. Okay, I just want to make sure we're on the same page with uh, that. Does it matter what color mulch? No, no, I don't okay. think so. I think dark brown is probably what yeah. they're going to end up getting. Yeah. 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 I don't like the dyed mulch. Well, no. it's nice, but I'd rather not have yeah, it. Yeah, no, I agree. I agree. Do you think about four feet on either side? We'll do as much as we can. Well, I mean, tell her why. Yeah, we were, I was talking to Nancy. Those rolls come in four feet, okay. eight feet, 12 feet. Okay. I just want to get a, some sort of idea of what we're looking at to get. Okay. That's all. All right. If you could let me know ahead of time. Yeah, I'm going to go take a look at it probably in the morning and decide. I'll, I can, like, 
tape it off with some pink tape so they stay within the I'll measure it too okay so if I can get them to do a little bit more because that stuff really it grows into everything it grows into the side of the wall it grows over the steps when you're walking up the steps so yeah. I want to get a good chunk of it out of there uh, and then the other thing do you know what's going on with those two planners that we wanted yeah, for the I sent industry? you an email earlier when you sent me those emails tonight um, I talked to Matt okay and there we're gonna have them here if everything goes well, we'll have them here by the time you start planning. Okay. Okay. And, and moving the other one. Oh, yeah, and the one from the Hula Bar just moved down. Yep. All so right. the Calabrese. Yes. Yep. Yes. Can you mention about that ribbon on the poles? The yeah, I already poles. emailed Jerry. Oh, yeah. 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 I'll, put ribbon, I'll put pink ribbon on every pole that we want the baskets the on. They will be here on Tuesday. They usually come in the morning because they only come to Pittsburgh two days a week, Tuesdays and Fridays. So if you could maybe make arrangements for those baskets mm -hmm. to go up that day, I don't want them stored in the garage because they'll die. Yeah. They can't be in the dark garage. So, all right. Uh, um, okay. Uh, one other question: Are there some poles that are only getting one plant? Possibly. Is because I thought I counted that? correctly, but I miscounted. I think I missed a couple poles. Yeah. So I'll, I'll go around and I'll see which ones there could possibly be one on. If I could do one on a pole instead of two, that means I could probably fill up some of the other poles. You know what I mean? We'll have all the poles. Yeah, so we'll get together maybe and make a map to yeah. give to Dom to give to AJ or to give to AJ yeah, or so we'll that they know exactly where to put them and which ones have one and which ones have two. True. Put the, yeah. put, I mean, there's a thing on either side. Can you put the, well, you're going to do it up that high. If I'm going to put one on the pole, I'll put a post-it note, I'll tape something on there that says one. Okay. How about that? That's fine. All right. Work. Anything else? Anything else? No, I don't think so. I don't think so. Okay, good. Okay. I don't know. Okay, uh, motion to adjourn to exec session for pending litigation, and we do not need to return. I'll make that motion. Second. I'll second. Motion by Mr. Conti, second by Mrs. Provenza. Any questions? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Yeah. Motion passed. Perfect.